Yeah. Here we go. All right. I'm with uh, directors uh, Raul Sanchez and Pascual Gutierrez about your film uh, Shut Up and Fish. Uh, I saw this a while ago. You guys were at uh, Holly Shorts not too long ago. Um, we were. Yeah. How was that experience for you? It was amazing, man. It was amazing. Uh, we had the kids come out that were, you know, the cast. Mm -hmm. uh, it was cool that it was in it was in L.A. because obviously that's kind of where we're from. That's also where all the kids are from. So, yeah, um, it was a nice kind of like hometown situation, little red carpet action for the kids. And we did well. You know, we got an honorable mention, which was amazing. Yeah. I like couldn't believe it. So it was it was really special, man. Like especially I think having those kids be there and mm -hmm. they brought their family and their friends and yeah. 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 It was also, it was cool because it was also cool because that was the first, I mean, as a, as a duo, we're, we're a part of this duo called Plika. It started off mostly in like music videos and commercials. That's the space that like we like started working together in. And it was the first time that we actually did a narrative project together, which was, it, it was cool finally seeing something like in a theater with like a bunch of people. And it was also kind of packed with like friends and family. So like, you know, having people laugh when they're supposed to laugh is like a, like very rewarding, like feeling. So that was, that was, it was yeah. fun. Um, yeah, absolutely. That is in as well. Yeah. And, and for a festival that feet it has just short films, uh, Holly shorts is one of the best right. ones, especially, you know, I think you mentioned it well attended, um, usually packed crowds each, each night. So, uh, it's, it's hard to beat that experience as a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of times, you know, there's short blocks, and it's like people are there to see the features or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think exactly what you're saying for it to be just shorts was, and dude, we had a crazy block too. We like had a, we closed it out one night, and there were some amazing shorts in that block. Um, yeah. Some that like Netflix had fun. It just there was there was big stuff. I think one of the shorts that. The only American short that was playing Cam, I think, was uh -huh. in that block as well. So it was it was awesome to be in that in that company. Yeah, amazing. So uh, yeah, let's talk about the film that premiered there. Uh, Shut up and fish. Uh, tell me, tell me the story real fast. Ooh. The story of Shut up and fish. <laughs> The story, uh, the story of the film, or the story of like making. The well, film? the the basic plot. Let Let's just go with that, and then we'll get into the story behind the film. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think it's, 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 it's almost sometimes hard to describe, I think for me and Raul, but I guess I would, you want me to take a crack at it or you want to say it, Raul? I, I always think about the, the tagline, are you down or not? It's kind of like where my head goes, but you go, you, 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 you do you Yeah. Right, that's a, it's a great tagline. Are you down or not is the tagline. And it's about a young boy, um, you know, deciding whether or not he wants to kind of fit in with this group of friends, mm -hmm. uh, all within the confines of a of a long afternoon on a boat. Yeah, yeah. more yeah. or less coming of age. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, well, I, I, the, I think I, I called it a rite of passage. In, in a rite of passage. Rite of passage. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Much better. Um, yeah, so then let's get into how, what, what is your backgrounds? Uh, you, you, you're the team of Klika. Uh, mm -hmm. What is your background? How'd you get together? And uh, what brought you to this point? Um, I mean, we, like Raul was saying, we, we started working in music videos. Uh, we were both directors doing our own thing, respectively, in LA, and we just linked up through friends, through our girlfriends, our partners at the time, started hanging out, going to parties, brainstorming on things. We made the duo of Click Up doing only pretty much music videos in Latin America, doing like a lot of like reggaeton stuff, a lot of stuff in the Spanish speaking market. And then we crossed over doing stuff in the US with like The Weeknd and Canada and all that. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I don't know. I think we, we've we always wanted to do more than that. We've always wanted to do narrative-driven projects. I mean, our music videos are pretty narratively driven, but we wanted to like take our first foray into the fully narrative space. So that's kind of what this is. Um, 
it's about i mean i don't know like we're both from greater la we're both like mexican american the, the, these themes are important to us i think we're we're really uh in we were really into the edgar culture i'd say that really comes from yeah, at all. You want to talk about the Edgars? I mean, I, I think like one of the things that made us even connect or like we became friends off of was like our shared love of this, that page, the Foo's Gone Wild page. And like yeah. just kind of these like, they're just these cultural touchstones when it comes to like Chicano and like Mexican American mm -hmm. stuff. And like Foo's Gone Wild, if you could, if you could, it's like an Instagram like meme page almost, but it touches on a lot of these themes, you know? And like one of the things about, that page that they always talk about is Edgar's, which is kind of like, it's a specific haircut. It's like this bowl cut haircut that a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of the young Latino kids have right now. And it's kind of this like double-edged thing because they kind of get a bad rap for having it. They all kind of get stereotyped as like kind of these like kind of little like bad kids, you know? So I don't know, we just, we were like kind of brainstorming on like what we wanted to do in the narrative space. And like Edgar's were top of mind. We'd even like, We'd even like thought of using um using that like subculture in like a few music videos that like didn't pan out so i think like you know that's how all creative things sort of happen it was just like top of mind and and we were on a commercial in las vegas just kind of brainstorming and pasquale had bought this hat that said like shut up and fish on it and somehow like all of these ideas came together and we're like oh let's do something with like a bunch of editors on a boat and then from there it's sort of you know we made it happen started yeah. writing the thing and it probably took us like what it probably took us like seven months or like no we we thought of the idea in october and i think yeah. we shot it in like uh, september of the next year or something so it was yeah, kind of like something we were kicking around for like a year so was there I, so it sounds like there was a lot of uh you know just kind of the like when i write there's a period where you just have to not do anything and just think about it and let it ruminate until you get so you get some kind of idea right. that you want to latch on to. Is that what was happening it was, here? I mean, sort of, man. I actually kind of described this one as really like a lightning. It was a lightning in a bottle thing. Like we we had been talking a lot about wanting to make a short for a long time. And then mm -hmm. I, I feel like the majority of the idea kind of came to us almost in one night, you mm -hmm. know, and we had it then. And then it was just changing little things here and there. But I, I really think we the script itself evolved a lot until but you know up until principal photography but the idea was always kind of the idea i think it was just like what which is rare and awesome you know because i don't think that that happens very often i think it was also a sign mm -hmm. that we were like yo we got to make this because it just came to us so quickly over dinner mm -hmm. and we're like let's just fucking do this but i think what what uh just took so long was it was the casting process which was very involved and also the fact that it was like you know a lot of favors there was a lot of logistical things that made it mm -hmm. uh you know shoot as late as it did so we we have a lot of uh indie filmmakers who, who watch our channel and and that's why we like to talk to filmmakers like you um yeah. and and the question i have is so you have an idea you you realize you want to do a short film you have an idea you kind of get the story together uh how do you how did you get it green lit uh, to the point where you can look for a producer money and, and resources to actually make the movie. Uh, so that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> we, Raul and I have been working in, you know, we, we put a, a, a good chunk of our own money into this. Um, but we also, again, like without Doug Riggs, who's uh, our EP on the job on this project and also Ryan Hahn uh, from HPLA, like they, they were just behind us. We had sent, we had written the first draft of the script and Doug was coming by to hang out, came to our office and, and read it and was like, let's do it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think we, it's, it's a great question to ask, you know, especially like as Raul and I have just worked on some other projects more recently, um, funding is, is really so important. It's something that like, as a filmmaker, you don't want to think about that much. You want to think about just the creative and like making the thing and 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 making it as good as it can be but you know it really they really it really can uh, <laughs> make the difference between something that actually happens or not you know i yeah. we were very lucky in the sense where i think because we've been working in music and at all like tell me what you, you chime in but like i feel like what it was for me was that we've been working in music videos and we our names were out there 
for a mm -hmm. while and people were waiting for us to make something so when it came the opportunities were there but i don't know what, what would you say to that i also think like i don't know we we kind of like saved up enough money in like commercials and music videos to like give ourselves that like you know luxury like I, we would mm -hmm. i wouldn't have been able to do it like 10 years ago you know like yeah which kind of yeah. which kind of sucks a little bit like i wish someone would have just gave me like because like the the thing cost like you know it wasn't it wasn't like super expensive but it also wasn't cheap and i think that's something that like really comes across in the film itself you know there's like a craft to it that like you know even with all the favors that we were able to pull and all the stuff like certain things cost a certain amount of money so like i i almost look at it like we had to bust our ass for like a while to like be able to like fund mm -hmm. it ourselves and make it the way that we yeah. want to make it not just make yeah. like the b version or like the 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 version that's like you know just shoot it on the iphone like you know like a lot of times people are like yeah you got a camera in your hand like just shoot it like that <laughs> like yeah that i think that works for many things but it also like you know i think we also we have there's like a craft of like that we like to there's like a level of craft to our work that Mm -hmm. that we take a lot of pride in you know so like it was just like yeah the, the idea coming but then also i think over the years you know like people like doug and ryan have always been like supportive and been like hey when you guys want to do something hit us up and it, this was like kind of the first time we like cash those mm -hmm. chips in a little bit you know yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well i mean shooting on a boat's not easy uh that, that no, takes no, man that was really yeah. hard man that tell us about really it hard. Yeah, maybe so, next time. Maybe next time that that maybe next time no vote. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what you do? You go in the volume and you just shoot it all in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was that was actually in. that was actually discussed at one point. Yeah, that was something we were thinking about actually, because because uh, yeah, for all the reasons, shooting on a boat is tough. Yeah, <laughs> but I tell you, it, it it doesn't look the same. It you know. Yeah, you can only yeah. mimic nature so much. Yeah. Uh, so uh, talking about talking about the craft. Um, you know, I, you know, it's in black and white and it's not, it's never a matter of just, Hey, we're just going to shoot in black and white. There has to be some thought. There has to be some, some, uh, you know, some plan behind that. Um, so what was the choice? Why, why, why black and white? And then what was the preparation for that? Man, oh. the black and white question is interesting. Cause it was something that we were going back and forth on, like throughout, you know, um, yeah. One thing I, that what, it's not thing easy, that, it's not just a matter of shooting black and white. Uh, you know, they're, they're right. You know, I, I think you're you have to be much more cognizant of the shot composition. Yeah, by the by the time 100%. we were shoot by the time we were shooting, it was like the thought was this is a black and white film for sure. But we had to like get to that point. And I remember me and Pascal going back and forth forth on it like for a minute because I think the big argument for color or there was two things. Like I think with black and white, there was something. This is more like self-serving a little bit, but there's something interesting about like a filmmaker's first like kind of shorts and like they tend to be on black and white. That's like not so much, that doesn't have so much to do with like the creative of what we were doing, but like that's something that I've noticed. That So that was sort of like maybe what like pinged the thought in my head a little bit, but there was also the, the counter to that was like, man, we're gonna be in nature. It's gonna be beautiful on this lake. We found this like incredible lake. It's called like Lake Gregory. It's like probably like an hour and like 15 minutes away from LA, like near Big Bear. And we're like, man, are we just throwing away all this production value by like choosing to do it in black and white? But then I think like, I think one thing that black and white gives you is like, it sort of masks a lot of the things that you can't control when when you're like in color, you know? Like I think to the, to the argument about like how we take a lot of care and craft when you're like on a shoot like on a smaller budget and you like your wardrobe isn't perfect and the boat color isn't perfect and like all these things aren't perfect it starts looking like a wash and you didn't like have so much control over it so i think it like ended up helping in that way but i also think you know you could also look at it on a conceptual level and be like you know this kid's making like a binary decision like is he gonna be in with these guys or not like there's something that's like the stark contrast of black and white is sort of like can maybe add a layer of that to to what we're doing or something, you know? Um, well, yeah. well, Pascal, you want to talk about it? I'm I think I think that the, the decision about black and white mostly to if I, to be honest, I got to give our credit up to our DP Shalom. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, who who's incredible. Who who did so much with us when crafting this? He's a great friend of ours, and he's an incredible DP. Um, but he was he cared so much about this film 
um, when we shared the script with him, he he was on in the, on the early onset of of even developing the script when it wasn't even a hundred percent locked yet. He was kind of we invited him into the room, you know, and 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 he was sharing ideas. And I think there kind of we had this discussion around what is the aesthetic of this, and it's these kids that are these Edgars that are you know you see them on TikTok or you see them on the news or like they you know these these at this edgar cut became like considered something that was very like low brow um it was it was banned at knott's berry farm mm -hmm. um there's memes it's memeified and what we wanted to do is we were like man I, we should give this treatment like this bergman-esque yeah treatment for these kinds of kids. And I don't think you've ever seen that before. And, and to be fair, like I was really actually, to be, if I'm being completely honest, I was like still kind of pushing for color simply for the fact that I was like, you know what? Color is just more visibility, people. Color is easier on the eyes. We're making this film for the kids to watch. And they're gonna be like, ah, it's black and white, it's boring. But but as we made the film, I'm so happy that we did do it black and white because I was the biggest naysayer of it. But like, as the film's been, finished and it's come out and it's been received i mean oftentimes people say the greatest one of the greatest decisions that we ever made was to make that film in black mm -hmm. and white because it does give it this art house aesthetic and especially in the theaters and the festivals that it's played at you you never see these young latino kids look like that they don't look like this kind of french new way you never see them like mm -hmm. that you see like blood in blood out or whatever you know yeah. so so yeah, yeah. In the in the end, that was one that. of the that, yeah. That, in the end, that was like the biggest strength, right? Like even um, like people are like, man, it reminds me of like a Jim Jarmusch thing or something like yeah. that. But you're doing it with like Edgar's, you know. That's like that's where you get some cool like alchemy and it creates something that feels like fresh, you know. I think that's in the end, it like definitely did that. But I, dude, up until the up until the edit, we were just still like fucking with the color, man. We were still like, <laughs> I remember we we turned it on and we're like, oh, should we make a color? And then like. But then I think yeah. just on a practical level, it was like you saw all the things that weren't controlled yeah. as well. Like something about the black and white tied it all like together, like yeah. in like a well, nice visual aesthetic. I'll give you my two cents about it. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it, I'd love to the hear. Color, color is noise, um, and when you turn the color off, it, it it's not as loud. And 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 I think why it served one of the things that served your film so well is that when you get into the details, especially at the barbershop, shop. Um, the detail uh, of the of the cut and how it's cut it, it pops out even more, and then I also think that black and white um, elevates the tension uh, even more than, than in color. And and the greatest example just happened this week where you know Godzilla minus one minus color. I think right. I think without color, Godzilla is a much more intense movie than mm -hmm. it was was in color. And I and I think that that served the story. And I I think it it, it I think it brought much more attention to the details of the Edgars uh, that uh, that might have been softened uh, had it been in color. So that's that's my two cents. That's I love that. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Okay. So uh, let's see. Uh, last, yeah, last thing we'll talk about is the story itself. Um, you know, I there's, I think what, it, what, you know, when you have a cultural story like this about the Edgars, about Mexican, uh, Chicano culture, um, you know, for me, who's who's not <laughs> Mexican American or Chicano, um, you know, it's it's where where I connect with it is because it's a shared experience. You know, we've all kind of been there, right. wanting to belong, and then wanting to, uh, you know, it, kind of the compromises you make in your life personally uh, to belong to a group, and and you make that choice of, you know, how far am I going to push push my own moral personal morality and my own decisions. Um, I mean, what. You know, what are your thoughts about that in terms of uh, in terms of Shut Up and Fish being able to reach a, a broader audience than, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about being seen uh, and as great as is for, you know, for audiences to be seen, uh, what's even more important is to bring out that shared experience that brings people not in that culture together. Um, yeah, what are your what are your thoughts about that? Oh, yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, I think we, we definitely had that in mind, you know, it is a universal, it's a universal concept, right? And we, we, we have, and like, you know, we discussed this a lot when we were sharing the script with people like Doug and with a couple of other friends that were like, you know, not as close, a lot of people that didn't even know what the Edgar was, 
You know, it doesn't that we, we were very conscious of that because I think if you strip the haircut away, you know, it's a great aspect of the film, but like the film still does stand on its own and there's still something that everyone can kind of connect to. And e even if you're not like a boy, you know, there's still these universal concepts of like that tender age of, am I going to hang out with those kids or not? You know, like you're in this kind of in between liminal space and you're trying to figure out who, what kind of person you're going to be. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's it's great to hear you talk about that because that definitely was a goal of the film. I mean, a huge part of it for for me and Raul, you know, I'm curious what you think about it, but a huge goal for me was was to make something with visibility, like you said, like, hey, we want Edgar's on the screen and I want to see him at a festival, you know, but I want people to connect to it as well. People that don't know, that don't know about this. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, it's classic coming of age, I think. There's classic coming of age elements in there, you know, which is a tale of the oldest time. And that's a that's a genre in and of itself that I think is, like, extremely universal. But, uh, yeah, Ro, what would you say? I just, yeah, and I, I think it relates to people because it's, like, the whole thing is drawn from, like, a ton of our own personal experiences. I remember writing it and us just go trading stories about, like, what it was like to be a teenager. And, like, you know, we weren't, a part we didn't have the privilege to be a part of like the edgar community back in the day but like you know like they're going through the same shit we are you know and that means that you're gonna go through that same shit as well you know so i think yeah that was always a goal you know to have something like universal that people could relate to in the film for sure and i think that comes across because at some point you know you're gonna have to make that choice you know are you down or not <laughs> all right well yeah. great i uh, yeah, no, I again, I, I loved Shove and Fish. Um, let's see, I, I believe you're still on the festival circuit, but is there a plan how to as to how people can see the film? Raul, well, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the plan is to put it out as soon as as soon as we are done with the festival circuit. I think we, it's almost been it's coming up to a year that we've been applying to festivals and it's still like getting into places so. We want to see that through but as soon as we're done with it i think we're either gonna we might look for a partner to like premiere it or just put it on youtube or something i don't know because it, it it really is like it's interesting man that's kind of the that's kind of the most interesting thing about it like we really made it for a certain community and that community really hasn't seen it at all because you're not they gonna, haven't been at the festivals they, they're not going to go to the festivals to see that except the guys that we actually like brought like you mm -hmm. know and their families mm -hmm. and stuff you know i'm really excited to see like if the meme page that it inspired like the whole thing like would repost it you know like that that sort of thing is like another chapter that's going to be like it's it's going to be exciting to see like how it's like received like publicly so i think like i think the goal would be to put it in a place where anyone can see it like for free you know definitely all right well thank you very much i appreciate this uh fantastic conversation and uh good luck to you thank you thanks yeah, i thank appreciate you. you man appreciate right. you man see you Talk soon, man.